Good evening, I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News update. The checks are on the way. Millions of American families are receiving advanced child tax credit payments this week. Depending on family size, you'll get up to $300 per child each month through December. It's part of the American Rescue Plan signed by President Biden. Research from Columbia University in New York found that for each dollar this tax cut cost, it returns $8 in benefits down the line. $8 would have to be spent other ways. It's a gigantic help. It's an eight to one return. Your head, your heart, and your budget all lead you to the same place. This is the right thing to do. Meantime, Congressman Anthony Brown held a roundtable this morning with parents and child care providers to kick off the tax credit program. Eligible families will receive several hundred dollars monthly under the tax credit. Brown says the payments will help the economy. And while we are starting to get back to normal, Brown says many women are still at home. Parent Jody Kumar says the money will be a big help, especially with child care. We believe that uh, with this uh, child tax credit, we are going to lift a lot of children and a lot of families out of poverty. Um, and it's, it's a transformational change, we think, for families uh, and the economy. It's going to be a significant ease um, just on our financial load uh, in general. Um, I mean, we're struggling to make ends meet, so that's going to go directly towards child care. The roundtable was held at a child care center in the county called Centronia this morning. Well, a fire broke out at a new Carrollton apartment complex early this morning, displacing several tenants. It happened at the 5500 block of Karen Elaine Drive just before 6 o'clock. When crews arrived, they found flames coming from just one unit in the building. Six people were rescued. Nine residents were displaced. And two people were transported to a hospital following a house fire in Temple Hills. This happened yesterday. Crews were called to the 4500 block of Old Branch Avenue just before 2 in the afternoon. Officials say the fire originated in the basement but spread to the first and second floors. A man and a child suffered serious injuries. The Office of Emergency Management is assisting three adults, 12 children, and five displaced pets. And state and local leaders are looking to put Baltimore on the international sports stage. Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford and Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott announced that the city is hosting or running in the running to host the 2026 FIFA World Cup soccer games. This is a promo the host committee is running. Officials say the city already has the infrastructure in place, like a stadium, entertainment venues, and accommodations, and that Charm City just makes a lot of sense. You know, as a soccer fan myself, I've witnessed the excitement and pride that the sport fosters in other parts of the world. And I'd like to see that come here to Baltimore, to see that same excitement and pride right here. The last time the U.S. hosted the World Cup Games was in 1994. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. Coming up, Patricia Vallone visits with a master falconer. Stay with us. Here are your AARP top tips on caregiver preparedness during coronavirus. First, form a caregiving team. Create a list of people in your family and friend network who can help with caregiving tasks. Take an inventory of supplies in your loved one's home. Try to have a two-week supply of essential items. Make a list of the care recipient's medications and medical contacts. Be sure to have prescriptions on hand and ask the pharmacist for an extra 30-day supply. Make a plan to stay connected. To prevent social isolation, set up available technology to help loved ones stay connected and schedule regular chats. Finally, maintain your own self-care. Follow the Centers for Disease Control's guidelines for coronavirus safety and have a backup plan for care in case you become ill. For more caregiving tips during the coronavirus pandemic, go to aarp.org caregiving. I can do this. We believe in you. Each day brings hope. Every day, millions of people celebrate their recovery from addiction and mental illness while others begin their journey. Be a part of it. Tell your story. Join the Voices for Recovery. Together, we are stronger. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental or substance use disorders for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Welcome back. 
Prince George's police need your help in locating a missing man. This is 73-year-old Eugene Reeder. He was last seen on the 1800 block of Dutch Village Drive in Landover Monday night. He's about six feet tall and weighs about 220 pounds. He was last seen wearing a black shirt and gray pants. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to contact police. Well, the state of Maryland reaches a milestone. Governor Larry Hogan has announced that the state has administered more than 7 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccination. Nearly 76 percent of Marylanders 18 years and older have received at least one dose, outpacing the national rate of 67.8 percent. 92.4 percent of Marylanders 65 and older have received at least one dose. Maryland ranks sixth in the nation of those who are fully vaccinated. As for the latest numbers, COVID numbers, the state health department has confirmed 178 new cases, including 55 in Prince George's. The positivity rate is 1.14% and four people have died of COVID since yesterday. Unionized workers at the University of Maryland say the school's telework policy needs to change. Ask Me Local 1072 is asking for the school to expand its telework options as the campus prepares to fully reopen. Staffers say they are dealing with a lack of child care and limited access to public transportation. The union says talks with the university need to be with actual decision makers. The petition very specifically is calling for a higher level of dialogue with the university. And it was addressed specifically to President Pines uh, and the provost of the institution because they themselves do possess the power in order to be able to make change on campus. There should be no question about that. However, their response uh, came back through human resources, and they didn't even address the substance of the concerns. Just this week, more than 70 members rallied at the main administration building to deliver a petition calling for telework policy changes. Well, Falcon Week can help build character and compassion. Its importance is immeasurable. It changes lives. Those are the words of D.C. native Rodney Stotts, a master falconer, who says healing the birds is a reciprocal relationship. Patricia Vallone has more. That connection of I'm taking care of something. Rodney Stotts didn't always have an easy life. I was a bad guy, late 80s, early 90s. Ended up going to 33 funerals in one year. But Stotts got a second chance at life when he discovered injured birds of prey. There was a hawk setting in a tree. So we set the traps out. PG County police car rode up the street. My son said, Dad, he can come over here to us. He pulled in behind us and blocked us in. The guy said, what are you doing? I said, I trap hawks, owls, falcons. I'm a falconer. His first comment was, you're black. The D.C. native now calls it his medicine and says working with raptors has helped heal him in ways he never imagined. Well, my animals helped me to deal with all of those bad thoughts, the things that I used to do and ways that I used to be and stuff like that. And it, every time I would want to go do something that I knew I had no business doing, I couldn't because I had an animal to take care of. So I, I didn't have a chance anymore. So it, it People think that the animals, that I say them, no matter, they say me. Today, Stotts is one of only a handful of black master falconers in the U.S., but he hopes to change that with a sanctuary soon to open in Virginia in honor of his late mother. The sanctuary is named after my mom, who passed away seven years ago. Her name was Murray Stotts, but her nickname was Dippy. So the sanctuary is actually called Dippy's Dream. His mission was featured in an award-winning documentary called The Falconer. The film is an intimate portrait of the man and his mission to provide a sanctuary for animals and access to nature for the local community. Stott's motto is Nature Heals. All this is heal. All this is medicine. Patricia Vallone, CTV News. To see the documentary about Rodney Stotts and his raptors, log on to falconerfilm.com. Meantime, the name of the sanctuary is called Dippy's Dream. Although it isn't open yet to the public, private appointments can be made. Log on to rodneysraptors.webs.com for more information. Stotts says there is no fee to visit, but donations and volunteers are welcome. Well, Metro plans to extend rail service hours to midnight starting Sunday. It'll be the first time since cutting back its operating hours 16 months ago during the pandemic. Metro had cut service hours to 11 p.m. to allow transit workers more time to clean trains and stations. The extended hours come as more offices are set to reopen this fall. 
Still to come on CTV News tonight, summer baseball, kids and cops. It's a winning formula in Upper Marlboro. We'll explain just after the break. Stay tuned. If I could be you, you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. If you could see you through my eyes instead of your ego, I believe you'd be surprised to see that you've been blind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Yeah, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk, Walk a, mile a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse Walk a mile in my shoes Every two minutes, a woman in the U.S. is diagnosed with breast cancer. And in that moment, her life changes forever. The toll is great. The need is greater the need to find comfort in the dark hours, the need to find hope in the cures. And that's why when others look away, we lean in. We're fighting alongside patients because we know one moment can change everything. But we need your help to make more moments of hope possible. Join our fight, save lives, because we are all stronger together. Community relations played out on the baseball diamond in Upper Marlboro this morning. It was day three of the Prince George's Police Athletic League baseball camp for kids. Call badges for baseball. About 35 young people took part in the three-day camp and worked on their batting and catching skills. This is such an amazing camp where we can bring uh, police officers and our youth out here together and in positive interactions, um, you know, work out here, you know, mentoring them, teaching them the game of baseball, um, just out here having a good time. So we've been doing drills and then after we learn the fundamentals, we use that in the games and it's a lot of fun. I liked running the bases around. That was fun. The camp culminated in a big game this afternoon. The orange team versus the blue team will tell you the winner tomorrow. Well, if you're interested in drones, cybersecurity, or even mass media, make sure to join the county executive's summer passport program tonight. This two-week course kicks off at 530. The Minority Tech Foundation and Building Momentum will conduct drone simulations. Kids will also learn about engineering these high-tech devices. You must be between 12 and 18 years old. It's important to let them know that there's a career outside of the norm. Uh, drones people look at to use just for fun, but People make a lot of money uh, in a business using drones and cybersecurity now with all this uh, things being breached in, in, our, in the, not only in the county but worldwide, it shows them that there's a career path when they uh, get ready to graduate and something that they can look at. The county is hosting the event in person at 5400 Marlboro Race Track Road. Let's get a quick look now at our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low around 75. Tomorrow, sunny with a chance of afternoon showers and a high near 95. Saturday, mostly sunny with a high near 96. And Sunday, partly sunny with showers likely and a high near 86 degrees. And now for the community calendar, a reminder for parents, the Prince George's County Health Department is offering vaccines for students ages 12 and up during their mobile vaccine clinics. The program is taking place now until July 30th and operates from 1.30 until 5.30 in the evening. All students must bring a completed consent form in order to receive their vaccination. Parents are welcome to accompany their child, but you're not required to come. Consent forms and a list of schools can be found at pgcps.org. And that's your CTV News Update. I'm Byron Scott. Good night.